Cullen. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And could I begin by associating myself with the words of the Chair of the Public Accounts Committee, particularly around cladding and indeed about getting London out of Tier 3 as soon as we can. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, 2020 wasn't quite the year we envisaged, particularly as a first-time member of this House. Um, but I think it's important that behind all the statistics that we've heard this year, at many Christmas dinner tables this year, there will be a loved one, a family, a friend who will not be sitting in that chair, uh, taken from us too soon by this terrible virus. And of course, our collective national effort this year has been about tackling coronavirus. And out of the 10,000 bits of casework that have come through my mailbox this past year, the overwhelming majority have been related to the pandemic in some way. So I hope this Christmas we will remember those who we lost too soon, but also to pay tribute to our frontline workers in the NHS, but also all those other essential services that kept going throughout the pandemic and for everything they have done for us this year. Mm -hmm. But as well as tackling coronavirus and the issues related to it, I've not been deterred from standing up for the issues that Carshall and Wallington residents elected me to stand on a year ago. Uh, one of those issues is about jobs and the local economy. Uh, even before the pandemic, residents were raising with me concerns about how long shops would stay empty in our local high streets, uh, not just in our main shopping centres like Car Shorten High Street and Woodcote Road in Wallington, but our small shopping broadways that often get so often forgotten, yeah. like Hackbridge, the Rose Hill Roundabout, the Circle, Beddington, Car Shorten Beaches, the Mountain Clock House, Wallington Green and others. And I've spoken in this place many times about the support for local businesses and the support that the government has put in place during this pandemic really has been unprecedented and is incredibly welcome. However, I want to see our local economy actually thrive, not just survive, but thrive once this pandemic has passed. So I intend to work in 2021 with these local businesses to push for the improvement funding that is needed, but also use things, uh, tools such as business improvement districts for businesses to get together and show what they can do to help them bounce back after the pandemic. Uh, transport is also a major concern for residents as it was before the pandemic. Obviously, passenger numbers now are incredibly low on our public transport networks. Um, and Madam Deputy Speaker, I think you may, even been in, may have been in the chair during my adjournment debate back in June, um, where you may have heard me speak then about, despite being in a London borough, Car Shorten and Wallington is incredibly poorly connected compared to the rest of London. Um, it, during that adjournment debate, I Drew, I drew attention to the need for additional investment in public and um, transport infrastructure and our excellent candidate for the London Assembly, Neil Garrett, has shone a light on some of the astonishing figures on public transport investment in Carshorton and Wallington, not least of which Sutton consistently coming last out of investment from City Hall compared to all other London boroughs uh, and projects such as the Tramlink extension and the Go Sutton bus, which have been fought for for so long, now have a very bleak looking future indeed. But we have had some good, good news, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, this year we commenced the National Rail Consultation on the Croydon Bottleneck Scheme, which, if it goes ahead, will unlock additional rail capacity in suburban London, yeah. including to Carshalton, Wallington, Hackbridge and Carshalton Beaches stations. And on top of that, Transport for London are currently running consultations on improvements to the local bus network. So I will be continuing in 2021 to, to work with our London Assembly team to push for those improvements but also working with our local councillors to hold the council to account over failures in their road closure schemes, which are causing absolute chaos on local roads. And one of these concerns is about the impact that these road closure schemes have on the local environment and when air pollution builds up, when traffic starts backing up on our main roads, which is not a new worry. Uh, protecting our green spaces and cleaning up air pollution has long been a concern, not just during the pandemic as more and more people are using their cars. And I think the example of the Beddington incinerator is the best one I can give, which can be seen from many points across my constituency, and it's something that I've raised in this House many times this past year. And it's part of the reason that that incinerator is there that I want to see more air quality monitoring stations put in place across the constituency, but especially near this site, so that residents can have access to independently gathered and real-time data about the air that they are breathing. Yeah, yeah. We've heard a willingness to install one near this site, so I do hope that the council and the operating company will deliver on this promise. But linked to this, I also want to continue to stand up for our fabulous local green spaces. Indeed, Sutton is one of the greenest boroughs in London. Whether it be fighting the council's previous proposals to build on Wellfield open space, a school at Sheen Way, or put a traveller site at Roundshaw playing fields, I will continue to protect our green spaces and fight to enhance them as well, such as delivering the promised Beddington Farmlands project and protecting parks from overdevelopment so that our residents can enjoy 
um, the open space and our children can be sure that they are breathing cleaner air. But linked to this, I believe one of the best things that we can give our children is a good or outstanding local school place yeah. to go to. And Castle and Wallington is home to be lucky to be home to some of the best schools in the country. Indeed, some of our grammar schools like Wallington Boys and Wilsons and Wallington Girls often appear at number one, two and three at the league tables. I benefited from an, ex I benefited from an excellent um, education in Carshall and Wallington at Carshall and Boys Sports College. And I want every local child to have that same opportunity. But we simply don't have enough secondary school places in Sutton to be able to cope with the demand. That is why I'm hoping that the planning inspectorate will decide next year to approve planning permission for a new secondary school at Rose Hill, which the council is currently trying to block. That way that we can build the schools places that our children need and get every local child to a good or outstanding local school place. To move on, Madam Deputy Speaker, another area which has remained of concern throughout the pandemic, but also before, is crime and antisocial behaviour. Now, Carshall and Wallington is statistically one of the safest parts of London, but the pandemic has shone a light on increasing incidents, um, especially of catalytic converter theft, pet theft, vehicle-related crime, antisocial behaviour, but also tragically domestic violence. The increase in police officers in London is incredibly welcome, and I'm glad that Sutton will be benefiting from this uplift. And working closely with the local police, I hope that we can find the people who are behind these organised crimes, um, but also encourage a greater police president presence in some of our worst affected areas, like the St Helier Estate and at Roundshaw. But finally, Madam Deputy Speaker, the biggest issue, not just during the pandemic, but for many years now, has been our amazing local hospital, St Helier. Uh, as a former NHS worker myself, who was born at St Helier, and as the hospital saved my fiancé's life last year, I make no apology for making St Helier the number one thing that I will be fighting about. Yeah. Even before I was elected, I was making the case with my honourable friends, the member for Sutton and Cheam, Wimbledon and Rygate, that St Helier needed investment and we needed a third local hospital to complement Epsom and St Helier hospitals. And our local hospital has, I think it's safe to say, has been there for us during the pandemic. And I'm delighted, therefore, that the government has listened to the calls and backed the NHS with a £500 million investment in Epsom and St Helier hospitals. Now, this half a billion pound package will not just upgrade Epsom and St Helier to become modern 21st century healthcare facilities, but build a third purpose-built, state-of-the-art new hospital to provide acute services, saving services that were previously going to be lost to outside of the borough, like A&E and maternity. And I want to put on record my thanks to Daniel Welkelees and all of the staff at Epsom and St Helier for helping to bring this about, but also for their amazing contribution to tackling the pandemic and what has been an incredibly difficult year. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, despite um, the pandemic, Carshall and Whiting has still achieved a lot this year, um, but there is still a lot more work to do. We all hope for a better 2021. And as well as supporting the community through the pandemic, I want to continue standing up for Car Shorten and Wallington's interests here in this place so to support that thriving local economy, improve our transport links, protect our parks and clean up our air, provide a good or outstanding school place for every child, keep our area safe and deliver that £500 million investment into St Helier. Can I just finish, Madam Deputy Speaker, by wishing you, the Speaker, all of the House staff, my own team, Tommy Lewis, Richard Daisy and Catherine, uh, and everyone in Car Shorten and Wallington, a very, very Merry Christmas and a happy 2021. Yeah, yeah.